and it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father, your, father, your father and mother, which is the first commandment, which is the promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy a long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Thank you, Josiah. It's great seeing everyone here today. We finally got a little bit of rain, so that's our weather change for the year. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it, and it's done now. <laughs> There's a lot of things that have to do with families and the way families function, and uh, we're not going to cover everything this morning, but. Uh, we wanted to look a little bit at what it means to provide honor in a family and just what the Bible has to say about that. And so in looking at some of the passages, we've been talking really about what's core. I think if you're ever going to change your life or be able to do anything different, you have to know where to start from. And sometimes we don't know what the basis is, and so we don't know how to change the things that are supposed to change because really we need to go back to what's the basic. To what is the core? And uh, we've been looking and going through, I'm sure you've realized by now, the Ten Commandments, the first four of those talk about a relationship with God. And so as they talk about this relationship with God, it talks about there being one God and that we don't make pictures or images of that one God because it would take away from him. Also, he has invited us to be in his name and in his power, and so that's where we live and that's where we exist. And then he talks about keeping what is holy and about being able to respect God and the things that God says are holy. And so the next six deal with relationships. And so Jesus' summary of love God and love your neighbor is seen even in these commands. And so... The first one of those about relationships starts with family. And if we could get family right, it would solve so many things in our world today. This is the core, this is the basic bottom line. And the reason we deal with so many other things that end up as problems is really because we didn't get family right to begin with. And so we wanna think about what family is and what family's all about. The passage that uh, Josiah read to us is from the New Testament. It's kind of the beginning. He starts with showing honor and family because that's kind of how you're able to do this. So when he talks about showing honor, the first way that someone would show honor would be if they listen to you and do what you say. I mean, if they can't even do that, well, then it starts from much further back. How can we do that if we can't even understand what it is that you say, and we don't pay attention, we're not going to do anything. That's already a setup for chaos right there. And so he says, children, obey your parents. That's a way to honor them. That's a way for them to understand that you are uh, treating them with respect, that you are giving them honor. And so do what they say. Now, I understand they're forgetful, and I understand they need to be reminded, and I understand sometimes they just don't want to because I was one of those. <laughs> and I'm sure you were too. And we remember times like that, and so we can realize as we're raising our children, okay, they're just like me. Rats, I was hoping I got somebody else's kids that were better than mine, but I hope they were, my kids would be better than I was when I was a kid. That's always the worst ki curse on any child, is I hope you have a son just like you. So, we just never wanted to do that to their wives, but uh, oh well. The other thing he says here in this passage is don't frustrate them, because I think that's what happens sometimes. It's too easy when they're small to tease a little too much and to push a little too hard, and uh, they get a little bit frustrated with us. They get upset, they get angry, and it's easy to go too far with that. He says don't frustrate them. He says, don't provoke them to anger in this passage. Don't exasperate them in one version. And so he's saying, don't you know, push them to the limit where they are not going to have respect for you because this runs full circle. 
If you expect them to obey you and treat you with some kind of honor and respect, then you need to have some honor and respect for them and for who they are, for the size they are, and for what they know. And so the whole thing works together. When we show respect for them, then they in turn have the opportunity to learn that and then show respect for us. And that's really the way the process works. They're not going to get that from other kids. They're not going to get that from TV. They're going to get that from being in the home. And if we don't show respect and what that means and what it means to honor someone, we do that with babies, right? I mean, we look at them and we go, wow, that baby is so cute. It's bald. I mean, <laughs> it'll get better, but I'm not so sure. At least the babies we had, maybe yours are cute, but the, I thought, well, this baby, <laughs> we hope it outgrows that. <laughs> sure enough, they did, but it was looking kind of iffy there for a while. But we honor them. We treat them as if they're all important because they are. They really are. And they learn to treat you as if you are all important because you are. You're the parent. They're a child, and that relationship works together. He says not only don't provoke them to anger or to exasperation, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And so the things that God says for families, the way in which families are to work together, the discipline and instruction with which God says, I want you to have faith, I want you to be these type of people. He says, here's what we do for those, and here's the way in which we would treat them so that they understand what it is that God wants. That's not the job of the church, to raise your kids for you. Now, we have Bible class, and we try and teach some things, but that responsibility falls back on parents. You bring them up in this discipline and instruction of the Lord. And, of course, to do that, you have to know what that is first. And so part of that is your study or realizing how you were raised as a child. And so this cycle just can go on and on and on. And this is the way that God has designed it and the way that God understands it. Adults are to be respected and children are to be praised so that they know how to reach a place of honor. Honor your father and mother is a command with a promise. And so what's the promise? Well, the promise is that it will go well with you because believe me, it doesn't go well if you don't honor your parents. Uh, there's usually some discipline involved. He says, it will go well with you and you will live long in the land. And he, so he's pronouncing this blessing on them and being able to say, here's something that will work in your advantage in your life. So it, your life is much easier, your life is much better, and there's a little bit more to this promise. See, the promise comes out of Exodus chapter 20 where we have been talking. The promise comes out of the fifth command, honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land and the Lord, the Lord your God is giving to you. And so this whole idea of honoring parents starts from the very first time God gives a law. And he first talks about himself and he says, I want you to honor me, realize I'm the only God. And the very first command on relationships that he gives is, Honor your parents. That is the basic of all society. Honor your parents. So that, you know, this every, everything depends on this. And if you can't do that, then we're going to be in trouble. And so as you look at what happens with this, he says this has also a promise. And so you can kind of see the promise here that you will live long because when you look at the rest of the law in the Old Testament, disrespectful children were not tolerated at all. At all. Exodus 21 and verse 15 and 17 say, you know what? Anyone who attacks his father or mother, put him to death. Yeah. 
Leviticus 20 and verse 9, if you curse your father or mother, put him to death. Deuteronomy 21, 18 to 20, he says, if you have a rebellious son, the people are to stone him. That would solve a lot of the problem of uh, not honoring your father and mother, right? So I want you to know that that's in there. It was a serious thing because children either did this or they did not survive. So when he says, it is a promise, you will live long in the land because if you don't, you may not live long, period. And it may be God that takes you out. It may be somebody else that takes you out. But we are not putting up with a disrespectful child. He says, do not have that. I do not have that. You as parents, do not put up with that. Whatever it takes, do not allow that to happen. He says to the point of death. This is an Old Testament passage. Please do not do this in America. You will be in serious trouble for doing this in America. And so I am not advocating killing children, all right? Please do not misunderstand this. I am just trying to say this was a serious thing. For God to say, honor your father and mother, it had some very serious consequences because it is the basic core of society. And maybe God gives extra days for children that do honor their parents. And so certainly there's a blessing possible with this. Jesus picks up another side of this, I think, in, in this whole basic idea of family in, in uh, Matthew 7 and verse 12, where he gives us the golden rule. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. And it, it plays into this whole thing. Whatever you wish that they would do to you, you do to them. So children, if you wish they would give you honor, you give honor to them. Parents, if you want honor, then you honor them. It works in a cycle. If somebody will start the cycle of honor and respect, the cycle can continue. If everyone refuses to start the cycle of honor and respect, it doesn't have a chance of getting started. God says, I'll start, I'll give it a command. If you're going to be my child, you are going to honor your father and mother. Every one of you had one, both father and mother. Everyone has that. Nobody gets out of that. There are no exceptions. I'm glad I didn't see any hands. <laughs> but that's what he's trying to say. He says... The way that you want to be treated is the way in which you will treat other people. Teach them how this works. Because if you're nice, they'll be nice. And if they are nice, please be nice. I mean, that's what it is. You cannot abuse or mistreat people because you're in a bad mood. That's just not acceptable because it's going to start that whole downward cycle and it's going to cause lots of problems later. Parents are to model the behavior they want to see. You treat, teach them correctly what you want to see out of them. They understand that you can't just act any way you want, any time you want. Now, when they're babies, they do that. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I want. By the time they get a few years old, a few they need to know, I don't get to do that anymore. I have to be able to say, I'm going to do what other people want. And if you treat children badly, they will resent you and treat you bad. Just realize it. It, it does happen that way. This is the basic premise for everything. It works in families as well. At one point, Jesus is accused of breaking law and disregarding. And he uses this, and I want you to see how he uses this idea of honoring mother and father. So he, in Matthew 15, verses 1 through 9, it says, When the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders, for they do not wish wash their hands when they eat? And he answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? 
For God commanded, honor your father and mother, and whoever reviles father and mother must surely die. But you say, if anyone tells his father or mother, what you would have gained from me is given to God, you need not honor, he need not honor his father. So for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God, you hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. And we just crossed over the line, didn't we? <laughs> My dad would say, you've gone from preaching to meddling. <laughs> well, this is in Scripture. So let's understand what Jesus is saying. The Pharisees come with a question of law. It's all about ceremony. It's all about tradition. It's not about cleanliness of hands. You had to have dipped your hands the right number of times in the right kind of water and it has to run off at the elbow. If you does not, you did not wash your hands correctly in order to be purified, in order to eat, and you just have not done it correctly as a holy man of God. Disciples weren't doing that. They were just washing and thought their hands were clean. And Jesus had not insisted that they do it in the tradition of the Pharisees. And Jesus counters with, well, why do you take tradition and break God's law? And this is the one he picks. This is the one he picks to say, here's the one you're breaking. Honor father and mother. And whoever does not and reviles father and mother and he brings up the punishment must die. New Testament. Again, don't kill your children. There are other options. The one who curses father or mother is in a serious place of disobedience. You see what God has in mind, and Jesus supports that. His definition of this is, I want you to take care of your parents. Honor your father and mother means taking care of them when they get older. It's not getting out of the responsibility because, see, what they would do is they would give all of their money to God. When the collection plate comes around, they would go, here is an IOU for everything I own, every bank account I've got, everything I possibly have. It is all given to God. Of course, God, you want me to live in a nice place, right? So I'll keep the house. And I have to get to work, so I'll drive the car. And, and I, you know, have to have friends to encourage, so you, I'll oh, keep part of this bank account. You know, just to do your work, God. But when parents needed something, oh, I don't have any money for you. Because everything I get is given to God. And it's just a loophole they're trying to create to get around the fact that God said, you know what, with family you take care of family. They're trying to get around that and say, no, we don't want to take care of family. I mean, we started and they were our parents, but, you know, we're done with them. We're tired of them. We got out on our own. We got off and we can do whatever we want to now. He says, with family, you take care of family. I don't know that we hear this much today. And so he says, you are nullifying what God wanted. Who has the responsibility to see that this happens? Is it because the parents are asking or because the children want to do this? And I think really it has to come down to who's the one trying to show honor? Whoever's trying to show honor, that's where it begins, is with you trying to show honor. It doesn't say how. There's no definition as to how. Please don't misunderstand this. Sometimes they would have family live with them. Sometimes that's not the best way. It might be a good place of care. But he says it's not just that you don't care. It might not be the same house. Because sometimes parents can't stop bossing their kids around. They treat them like they're little kids. You cannot do that. They grow up. 
they're adults now, and you're not going to treat your two-year-old the same as you are your 18-year-old or your 40-year-old. You cannot mix those. You have to be able to treat them differently. So be careful with this. My children learned this very early on. Dad, be nice. We are the ones picking out your nursing home. <laughs> okay, does that give you a perspective on this? So maybe there's an incentive for being nice. I see two huge holes in society today. I mean, huge things that we don't know how to solve, that we try to solve, that we really mess up and do not know how to solve. And these are a couple of social problems that if we did it right, it would solve them. I think we have a history of not doing it that way, and there are many others who are not Christians who don't follow this, and so that's the reason we are where we are. The first one of those is people get older. What do we do? Sometimes they care for themselves, sometimes not. We need to take care of older people. God's answer to that problem is family. It just is. That's family. It's the place where that is done. Not society, not church. It is family. They raised you. Treat them the same way they treated you. And that's really what he's trying to do. It's the golden rule. It's, it's there all over again. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, as Paul writes to Timothy in Ephesus, there's a problem with that, and so I'm just going to give you some of the instructions he gives. He says, honor widows who are truly widows. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show godliness to their own household. And to make some return to their parents, for this is pleasing in the sight of God. She who is truly a widow, left all alone, has her hope on God and continues in supplication and prayers night and day. But she who is self-indulgent is dead even while she lives. Command these things as well, so that they may be without reproach. If anyone does not provide for his own relatives and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. There's some serious punishment here. What? Do you think God meant that, really? Hmm. Well, it's... Yeah, it is black and white. It's hard to get around the black and white. And it is a New Testament teaching. This is not just an Old Testament scripture. This is a New Testament teaching. And he tells Timothy, in your church, I want you to teach this. That there needs to be respect for parents. Honor parents. And then he talks about what happens. Some of them are, are widows. And they are widows completely because they have nothing and nobody else. And some of them are lost their husband, but they still have lots of kids. He says, how do you solve that? You solve that in a family. How? He doesn't say how. There's a lot of different options. But he says, that's for family. That is pleasing in the sight of the Lord. And there's certain behavior expected out of the widows. The ones who pray all the time, the ones who are there and they set their hope on God and they continue in this prayer. He said, but some of them are not like that. Some of them are just self-indulgent and they're going to use up whatever they can use up. And he says, we don't permit that either. This is not a simple answer, is it? Because families are messy and families are messy all the time. So he's not giving you how it works. He's just saying, this is the place where it works. It does go back to family. So what kind of care does it mean? It doesn't say. Maybe the same kind of care that they gave you. Basic, this is basic to humanity, to salvation, to faith, to relationships, to everything. If we get this one part 
right? Do you think it will change our society? Absolutely. It will solve so many things because this is such a huge problem in our world that we've come to where, well, government ought to do it. Really? Nothing in here about government doing that. But you know what? There's a lot of people who are not Christians and they didn't grow up with this and they didn't realize this is how it's supposed to be and the parents didn't treat them so well and so they may have grown up in a place where, yeah, if I treat those parents the way that they treated me, they are in trouble. And they may be. So we need to have an understanding about this. And hopefully they don't need financial help. But you know what? We don't just leave people out either. But then they have a responsibility to act the right direction as well. I'm not going to solve that side for you tomorrow or today either. There's one other problem, though, that we face with all this. And that's the prodigal. Jesus tells a story about a son who asked his father for his inheritance and he went to a faraway city and he lost it all and uh, he doesn't have any more inheritance and he ends up in the pigsty feeding pigs, which you're not supposed to feed pigs or eat pigs or this is a Jewish boy, you're not supposed to do this. And this is where he ends up. And when you end up at the bottom of the pit what do you do it says he came to him himself and said I'm gonna go home we don't see it look like this we see it more looks like this although that's a staged picture right that blanket is way too clean and there is no dirt on his face, and he's got a pretty sweet deal there. I've never seen a homeless person look that good. You've seen him. You know, how do they end up there? How do we solve that? And God has an answer. We solve that in family. That's how we solve that. And it's not easy. I don't want you to think it's easy. Luke 15, in verse 17, he says, But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and he came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. So prodigals have lost their way in the world. And where do you go when you lost it all? You go home. There needs to be that place. Home is the place that God designed where we take care of each other. It started with parents who take care of children, and it switches over to children who take care of parents, and the cycle just continues over and over and over until there will never be this kind of situation that we see in our country today. And it grows in such epidemic proportions. There do need to be a few understandings as you look at the parable that he is saying. There is no more inheritance. You get nothing else, okay? By the time you get to prodigal, you have no rights. You have no more, at least for the story that's being told. He is asking for a job. He is not asking just to be taken in. There is repentance involved. He is admitting his sin and saying, you know what, I didn't do it right. I messed this up. He is willing to accept being a servant under his father in the same house with the same rules that he ran away from. 
He does not get away with those. That is where he's going to be. With that kind of understanding, it might be possible. Without that kind of understanding, it may not be. Because you see, until he came to himself, he was on his own. Dad wasn't sending money. There are no care packages. In fact, uh, you know, the rejoicing starts when he says, my son was dead. Because that was kind of the way God said to treat him. My son was dead because he treated me like I was dead. And the cycle goes, right? And so when you look at all this, it's, it's one of those things that, wow, how in the world could this ever work together with great difficulty? But at the same time, if you knew this when they were little and started this when they were little and designed it so that you're raising them with all the care and compassion that, that you can put into them so that they will then give you back this kind of care and compassion when you're the one who's in the same shape as a two-year-old and trying to take care of yourself. Robert Frost wrote this. Home is the place where when you have nowhere, when you have to go there, they have to take you in. Does not mean it's always happy. Does not mean you can do whatever you want. It's just that there isn't a better answer. We have the option to make it better. And if we can't live with that, we can't go back home. If you can't be under somebody else's rules, you can't go back home. If there's no repentance, you can't go back home. He may deserve the worst treatment. But families can be forgiving. Families can have compassion. Families can show grace because they know everything about you and everything that has gone on and everything that you have done and they are in the best shape to help you get through this. And home will take you back, but it's going to have the same rules. It's not a simple solution, but we don't put up with rebellion and disrespect. If you have that, then you haven't come back home yet. We never quit being a parent. I thought once the kids were grown and out of the house, I could quit. And no. And maybe the good reason is because they seem to have our grandchildren hostage. So you don't want to quit being a parent completely because you're not going to get the good part of life, which is grandchildren. That is the whole goal of everything. Relationships change, and we don't need to tell them what to do anymore. If we trained them well, we don't need to tell them what to do anymore. If you didn't train them well, telling them now isn't going to help. They're going to have to learn on their own, and they're going to have to figure it out, but we don't ever quit caring. We don't lose someone who cares. You never see this any clearer than you do with Jesus. Not only in the confrontation with the Pharisees and not only as Paul writes about this to Timothy is saying, here's what happens in church. Make families strong. Make families work. That's what it's about. But when Jesus comes to the end of his life, and he's hanging on a cross in John 19, 26. When Jesus saw his mother and disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. What's he do? Why did he do that? Fifth command, honor your mother. There's no dad. It's not as if she has no one else. 
He has other brothers and sisters who can very well take care of her and should. But Jesus says this as example and apparently John takes her to be his mother because relationships are important. Honor in family is important. It is basic. It is core to our society. So many things it would solve if we could just get this. If we could just have honor in family, it's going to solve the homeless. It's going to solve the welfare. It's going to solve all kinds of issues because we will live on whatever all of us can get together. And we will be able to respect each other because we kind of need each other. We kind of have to. It's the place where God gives us. He says, that's why I gave you families. Maybe the scariest thing of all is if you raised your kids and they're in church, then they already know this, and it's going to turn out great. But if you didn't raise your kids to be in church and to know this, chances are they're not going to respect this either. And we are where we are. This is core. There are so many blessings to being one of God's people, to being a child of His, the kindness and the relationship with God, but also the relationship that He demands with each other. And when He says, this is how I want you to work together, and there's blessings of forgiveness and blessings of grace and love and caring, and the first place you see those is really in family. God's blessings all begin with salvation when we surrender to God, when we do the same thing the prodigal did, when we repent of our sins, when we surrender our life and say, you know what, I've, I'm going to mess this up. I need to go back home and I need to be with God and allow God to be the one who has control of my life. And so we repent of our sins and we are baptized into Christ and we say, I'm going to follow you and I'm going to follow your guidance. It's the way we get into God's family. And we're born into a new life and the old sins are taken away and we're added to his church and he gives us the Holy Spirit. And so I'm simply asking you this morning, come home. Because that's all God wanted in the first place. For you to be his children. For you to honor your father and let it play out in your own life today if you want to be a part of God's family if you want these blessings of God if you want to make your life so much better and easier then come to him while we stand and sing